You're the founder and the CEO of the uh, Mindset EdTech Innovation Center, right? Can you, can you tell us about, about this organization that you're the CEO of? Uh, gladly, yeah. gladly. Mindset is a spin-off of CET, uh, Center for Educational Technology, which is the most uh, established uh, player in Israel in the world of education, both mm -hmm. publisher and a software house for education. And uh, we initiated Mindset uh, because we realized exactly what you said in the, in the opening right now, that, that uh, something is happening out there. The, the world really changes very quickly. Mm -hmm the gap between the way learning is done inside schools and outside schools are getting wider and wider. And if we want to serve this community of learners, we should find a different way to develop solutions of learning. And the um, mindset way to do it is, is uh, through working with startups. Uh, as I, I guess you know, Israel is a very active uh, startup scene, mm -hmm. so uh, we try to bring startups to, to operate in the field of education and to suggest new, new solutions for the world of learning. And, and we also have um, a unit that develops new solutions based on the needs that we see and the expertise of this unit is, is uh, the, the pace. Mm -hmm. They are developing very, very quickly so we can develop a, a quick product, test it with the users right now, understand whether it works or not, and, and, uh, and repair it uh, until it's uh, the right, tuned rightly. Mm. Right, and I mean, in, in all of this, uh, I mean, you talk about Israel, that's, that's where you're from, right? And you're doing you know, a lot of work there. Um, education technology is something that Israel is really focused on. Can, can you really help us understand, you know, what you've been doing also in that regard you know in israel that you know we, we, you're also bringing down here to help all of us benefit from so so i can i can divide what we're doing between startups <laughs> that are developed in mindset <laughs> and, uh, and some activities in the system yes uh, i'll start from startups the, the kind of startups that are developed in mindset mm -hmm. are software or apps that uh, help kids to learn so one of our biggest uh, success was a company called Code Monkey, right? That teaches kids to code through playing, uh, very young kids. Mm -hmm. Another company from the same uh, world is MyQ that uh, teaches computational thinking. It's not about specific uh, coding language; it's more like like understanding the logic. Mm -hmm. And beside of those companies, there are solutions in the world of math, uh, like a game that teaches kids not to be afraid of math. Right. Uh, uh, cyber education for higher education, higher not for kids, that uh, really helps them to get this profession. So, so there's lots of different solutions that are all about learning new disciplines mm. or learning all disciplines in new ways. Um, so this is what we do regarding startups. Right. Uh, we also try to look systematically and uh, alongside with some other uh, organizations, we initiated a movement called Unboxing School mm -hmm. in which we are trying to look on the structure of school and, and suggest new ways of, of uh, organizing the way uh, learning is done inside schools. For instance, encouraging more uh, the skills of being self-learner. And in a world that changes so quickly, uh, the most important skill is probably be able to learn new stuff yourself. Mm. And l l let's talk about the purpose for your visits, you know, to Ghana and what you're doing in collaboration with the Israeli Embassy, of course, you've already given us a, a <coughs> gist of it, but let's let's get into the details now. What what is what is the purpose for your visit here in Ghana? Well, first of all, uh, um, with the embassy, we are participating in the conference, and we try to to be uh, part of the discussion that's going on right now mm -hmm. in Ghana. Uh, I can say that uh, in mindset, we have another uh, purpose for this visit, and this is. Uh, connected to an initiative we started 10 years ago. It's called the Global EdTech Startup Awards. It's, a, it's the biggest EdTech startup competition uh, today in the world. Mm -hmm. And we have a partner in, uh, in Ghana, GSET, uh, the, the Ghana Society for Educational Technology, right. which are doing a great job. And actually, they are, they are leading the competition not just in Ghana, but in all Africa right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so one of my purposes is really to, to meet them and to meet uh, some potential companies that will apply to this competition and, uh, and to we're going to do an event 
with with our partners here uh, that uh, will kick off the the competition for this year uh, so it's a combination of uh, being part of the conversation right. uh, meeting our partners and expanding our network and also seeing ways to collaborate with local partners and um, with the with the embassy we're going to do some meetings with with some uh, organizations and companies mm. based here. Right, and, and you talk about doing all of these meetings. W w what is going to be the focus of these meetings that you're having with all of these organizations as far as um, all of this is concerned? Well, I can say that I, I'm, I'm sure they have their own agenda and yes. we're going to see what, what they are interested in. It's mm. all about uh, conversation and, and dialogue. I can say about wha what I have on my list. Yes. Uh, yes. We are now, I think like most of the world, extremely busy with the generative AI and, uh, and the potential of generative AI in education. And uh, we, p we put together some kind of a consortium and, and international consortium of leading organizations across the globe that are developing new solutions for the world of, uh, of uh, education based on generative AI. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking for more partners. I think the key for this consortium to be successful is having a diverse uh, map of the world and territories. So we have right now partners from Spain, partners from the US, partners from the UK, and, and we would like to expand it to more countries. Mm. So, I mean, with, with what you do, I, I guess it's, you know, ge all of it is geared towards making sure that people are getting the right education to suit the times. How important would you say what you're doing is? Well, it's a great question. Um, I, I think it's less important that the, from what we are thinking. Mm -hmm. Always, in the end of the day, the mm -hmm. core of education is, is, is done by teachers, mm -hmm. uh, done by real human beings. Education is about co communication. Yeah. We can support that. We cannot really replace the core of education. But I think the support that we can generate can, can help the uh, human beings who are doing this work to, to be much more effective and to dedicate their time to the important stuff. And the machines can do all the rest. So mm. in this sense, I think it's, it's, it's important, but we know our place. We are not <laughs> in the middle of this story. Mm. But, but um, how important also will it be for those who, at the end of the day, will be receiving this kind of education, of course? We, we talk about the times that we are in. You know, it's, there are all kinds of things that are happening. And like I was saying earlier, people are not really equipped with the necessary skills to adapt, you know, to learn and all of that. So at, at the end of the day, how important will it be for those who are going to be at the receiving end of this, uh, this, this kind of education? I think it's important mainly because it's uh, like our name, it sets a mindset mm -hmm. uh, beyond the specific things that you are learning. Right. You are, uh, the, you are trying to be prepared to, to a new reality and, and uh, I think we can play an important role in that. Mm. And so... Let's now talk about some of the other activities. You earlier mentioned that uh, you'd be going to the university in Kumasi yeah. for a program. Let's 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 talk about that. What's 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 that about? Well, I'm gonna be part of the conference that it's about e-learning and uh, okay, the e-learning uh, conference. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and my part will be about generative AI. I'm mm -hmm. gonna share some of our thoughts about this world and also some of the activities we already have been doing that in that space. Mm. And mainly questions. It's a very puzzling uh, <laughs> uh, situation yeah. right now. You know, um, I, I don't know whether I can ask you this, but you, you talk about generative AI, right? And, you know, people talk about the potential that it has, especially when it comes to enhancing learning. Uh, there are those who believe that um, it may make people lazy and they may begin to depend solely on generative AI to do everything instead of doing the critical thinking on their own. Can I ask what your thoughts are, you know, on that? Well, I grew up in a reality that uh, when I was in school, mm -hmm. the first uh, calculators were entering to schools. Yeah. And there was a big debate among our parents and our teachers whether it's a good thing to let us use them. Because yeah. they said if they're going to use the calculators, they're gonna, they won't, do, they won't know how to do calculus, they won't uh, work themselves. Mm -hmm. And they were right. I don't know calculus as well <laughs> as my uh, parent knew. Yeah. But uh, I know other stuff, and I think this is reality. We are we are losing some skills, mm -hmm. uh, but we are gaining new ones, and uh, it's always a moving target. And and every generation thinks about uh, the new things that are invented as a risk for for uh, the old 
skills and is and usually they are correct but it also opens a new a new landscape for new stuff mm. and what what is the potential for generative ai well in education i think the main potential is is about personalization mm. uh, one of the biggest problems we have in school or the challenges we have in school is the fact that we have one teacher that teaches, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 kids in the same room. I don't know how, how many kids in classroom <laughs> in Accra, for instance, but well, in Israel, those are the numbers. Yeah. And uh, you cannot really give the attention for each kid in the way you want to do. You cannot really uh, give each kid whatever he needs. And uh, w using AI, I think we can, we can uh, solve some of this problem because those engines really learn us very quickly and, and uh, can walk us through uh, through the, the the lens of what we're interested interested in what the, the areas that we are more challenged by right etc right very well uh, we'll, we'll have to be wrapping up our conversation now um wh what would you say finally before you take leave of us well i think uh, like uh, um, zooming out uh, in mindset we're working with startups and startups are uh, daring to fail and uh, educational system are usually are very conservative and, and I believe that we want to bring this culture of uh, fail again, fail better as opposed to the uh, NASA kind of uh, uh, logo that says failure is not an option. I think in education it should be an option. Mm. It should be an option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thank you. Avi Washavsky for joining us in the st uh, in the studio today i hope i hope you enjoy your stay in ghana i really hope that you do thank you very and much like i i said try some ghanaian food absolutely yes try some ghanaian food and i bet you are going to love it <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> all right mr uh, avi washavsky is the founder and ceo of mindset at tech innovation center uh, he's also a member of the board of directors of the center for educational technology in israel uh telling us about why uh, they are here in Ghana. So uh, let's look forward to all of that. There's still more to come here on GH Today.